with profound sadness and deep sorrow, we received the definitive news just a short while ago, confirming the brutal murder of two of our finest, Rabbi Gabriel Noach and Rivka Holzberg, our dear representatives in Mumbai, India, who serve their community with love and devotion. This upcoming visit together with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, Israeli PM, who will be coming here at the 18th of January, will be to unveil our memorial, living memorial project, which will be the top two floors and the terrace of the Nariman House, which will be dedicated to remember and commemorate all the names of the victims of 26-11 attack. This is the time to take strength. This is not the time to ask questions. This is not the time to think. This is the time to do. We will answer the terrorists. We will not fight them with AK-47s. We will not fight them with grenades. We will not fight them with tanks. The Rebbe taught us a little candle in the room lights up the whole room. Such brutal darkness can only be fought by torches, by torches of goodness and kindness and light. Good morning from Mumbai, India. It is a beautiful but very hot and humid day. I am walking from my hotel to the Chabad house. This is uh, the famous Nariman house. Unfortunately, this Chabad house is famous for all the wrong reasons. So I believe it was in November of 2008. There was a terrible, terrible terrorist attack. Um, that took place in the city of Mumbai. It was an attack against against the people of Mumbai. Uh, many different locations were attacked simultaneously, and including the Nariman House, the Chabad House, where uh, the Chabad Rabbi and his wife, along with a few other Jewish people, were killed in murder in cold blood. So I'm on my way over there. We're gonna pray, daven the morning prayer, chakras and uh, take a tour of the place and we're going to get to know the Jewish community of Mumbai, India. So this is the view from inside the Chabad house, inside the shul, the synagogue room. Um, I'm going to dive in chakras to the morning prayers here and then we're going to give you a tour of the whole building. It's a fascinating place with a very sad history but that's reality, that's what it is. So I just want to introduce you to my friend Sachin. He is the caretaker of the synagogue here and the whole Nariman house. Great guy. The rabbi always tells me amazing things about him. I appreciate what you do here. Thank you so much. Sir. Thank you. You're welcome. So the rabbi and the rabbi are going to be uh, taking me through the market. So this is a... Uh, one of the chickens, chicken providers when uh, when we need. But usually I don't check here. This is where Gabi used to do uh, his chitas. Suno, buy some queso. I noticed that you're very good with the local people. Like you, you're making an effort to say hi and shake hands and give hugs. Uh, why is that? Uh, why is that? I think uh, one of part of our shlichas is uh, kiddush Hashem. And Kiddush Hashem is also for the local. So when we go out, I tell my kids, listen, everybody is looking at you as the Rebbe's Shluchim and as Eden. They don't know exactly what an Eden is, but if it's, they see a group of kids who are behaving, they see that something is outstanding over here. So it's, it's a Kiddush Hashem. Especially in this area, you have a lot of cousins, you have a lot of Muslims in the area. 
So uh, I think it's even more Kiddush Hashem to behave this way. Again, we have, we have to remember that every second we have a mission and every minute of our existence is for a purpose. So this is part of it. So, Shloimi got us some uh, chemicals from America that uh, hopefully will be very helpful for uh, our mikveh because we are uh, we have some issues with the water so uh, we're going now to put it in the mikveh and to see how good is it so we're going to see the mikveh yeah we're going to see the mikveh the mikveh was built by uh, Gabi and Rivki in 2015 before they had a Chabad house so, uh, because they didn't have their own property, they made an agreement with one of the local shuls, the Tiferet Israel synagogues, and they make a, like a long, long-term agreement with the shul. So they will build the mikveh in a condition that the mikveh will be managed and handled by them only. By by Gabin Rif by Gabin Rifkin. In the last years, we have uh, about. 20 women uh, in a regular month that use the mikveh and it's Baruch Hashem, it's, it's growing Okay, so this is the Teferis Israel Synagogue one of the... how old is this place, Rabbi? 1886 Wow So that's like 135 years yes. And we are going to see the mikveh which was built by Rabbi Gavriel Holtzberg, Allah Shalom, Shav Yim Kumin Demoy. Namaskar. How are you? So this is the mikveh they built. There are two pictures of Gavriel Levki. Only two pictures that they stood, uh, maybe three. Two famous ones that they stood to took a picture. One is by Rivki's sister's wedding, and one is when they inaugurated the mikveh. So there's a famous picture when they stand over here. This is the most famous picture of, uh, because they never, they never stood up to, uh, for a picture. So this is where, this, is where this, mik this uh, picture was taken. And this mikveh is the one, this is what it looked like when they built it? Uh, yeah, more or less, just the colors change a little bit. This is where the rainwater comes through. This is the Amshofe, where the rainwater comes. This is a, yeah, we have a place for the filter over here, the water heater, but yeah, everything is, has to be changed. Oh, wow. So this is a 135-year-old shoe in Mumbai. You see all the oil lamps. Oh. So from the olden days, they used to... They still use it. It's like they have a lift mechanism where you put the oil inside, you lift it, and then it goes up. This is how the synagogue used to be lit before before electricity. Hey everybody, so thrilled. But I gotta tell you. There's so much more going on. You need to download the Meaningful Minute app right away, ASAP. You gotta do this, Schnell. There's an entire world in that Meaningful Minute app that's gonna bring you closer to the Abishta. So please, right now, get that app, download it, and really enjoy becoming so much closer to Hashem. <music> Okay, so I'm following the rabbi through this neighborhood. It's a slummy area, and we are going to produce Chal of Yisrael milk. I'm not milking the cows. Oh, okay. I'm just uh, supervising them. So you don't have to do it yourself, you just have to be there. Yeah. Baruch Hashem, I don't have to do it myself because it's very uh, complicated. It's not easy as it looks to be. I tried a couple of times, but then I gave up.
where you stay, you are in danger from this cow, Shloimi. So the rabbi is watching, we're watching, and here it goes. Unbelievable. So this is how you get called to throw milk in Mumbai. Yeah, milk. From the milk we're gonna make cheese, yogurt. Who makes the cheese and yogurt? My wife. Who taught her how to make cheese and yogurt? Don't ask me, ask her. Yeah. Not me, for sure. <laughs> how often do you do this? So it really depends. And uh, We don't eat much uh, milk for ourselves. But uh, there are other families in the community. So it all depends how much they want, how much they need. We also eat a little bit of it, not milk, but uh, yogurt. Mm -hmm. So can be once a week, can be more. Wow. Oh, so this is how you're filtering it? This is how we do one filter in the house and another filter. Okay, got it. Kitna bar and zev, Sachin? 18? 12? 16. Ah! Call of Israel! Zok Shakoil! No, thank you. <laughs> I'll wait until that's been cleaned and pasteurized. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. Bye. This is the yogurt. You see the consistency. It's stayed over the whole night. Mm -hmm. And we fill it up in bottles. This is the way to go in India if you want to have Chol of Israel yogurt. It's amazing to me how much effort you put in to be able to eat. Yes. Okay, so the Chalef, which is the Shechite knife, has to be two things. Chad vecholok. It has to be sharp and smooth. So in order to sharpen and to smooth it, we use set, every shechet use set of stone, different stones uh, that each stone has a different, uh, different uh, plays a different role in making the knife chad vecholok. So I'll tell you a funny, anashgoche protis maise. I learned shechite, um, the year of the attack in Mumbai, I learned Shechite by Gabi's father, Rav Nachman Oldsberg, Hashem Yarich Yomim and Mamrachtoi. And uh, when he taught me Shechite, it was in a condition that we will, I will go to Shecht in Mumbai, because uh, Gabi was the Shechet of the Keil, and Gabi is not there. So he, Rav Nachman, used to fly, fly a couple of times to Mumbai to make Shechite, and it was... You know, Mumbai is not the best place to go on vacation, so he, made, he taught us Shechite, me and my friend Shechite, in a condition that we will go to Mumbai to Shech. And uh, we learned Shechite, we finish. While, uh, while, we, while we learn, he even gave me this stone. See, this is a, it's called a German stone, a, a green stone. It's very, very rare and very, very expensive. I don't know what's the, the, the money value of it, but... Uh, it's very, it's very valuable. It gave me this stone. Gabi used to use this stone after the attack. Uh, Reb Nachman took it to New York and he gave it to me, so I could uh, use it. So uh, fast forward five years, uh, a little after we came to Mumbai, we realized the need of the uh, shechite again. And uh, the next summer, when we were in Israel for a couple of weeks, I went to do a retraining in Mashchita uh, in Eretz Israel. And uh, that's it, I came and we started shechting 20 chickens a week and one of those days I'm standing in the market shechting chickens and all of a sudden the story of me telling uh, uh, Reb Nachman Olsberg that uh, yes, I'll go to Mumbai to shecht jumped to my mind and I said, you know, in English there is a say never say never so this is one of those times where I met first-hand experience with never say never Okay, Sachin, where, where are we going? We are going to cutting the chicken. Oh, we're going to do the chickens? Yes. Okay, thank you. So we're going to go do shechita now. The rabbi is going to meet us at the place. And uh, the Jewish community of Mumbai gets fresh chickens.
So, we used to, uh, before Corona, we used to go once every couple of months. Once every couple of months, we used to go to a factory, proper factory, with a whole crew. We used to come from Earth Israel. We shopped him, bought him, and we used to do a couple of thousands of chickens, and which would last for uh, four months at a time. And as Corona started, we no longer can have people coming. You are one of the first guests to arrive. So I had no choice but go back to the roots, go back to the original and check our own chicken. So once every 10 days, 15 days, depends on the consumption. I come here, we check 100 to 150 chicken, depends on how much we need. And we cash them, we make the whole process, we cash them, freeze them, chill them, use them, grill them. So, shall we It is my final day in Mumbai for this trip and I am running out to catch Shachris at one of the community shuls. It's called Magan David Synagogue. So here in this courtyard there's a school. I'm, from my understanding it's not a Jewish school anymore but it was founded by the Sassoon family and it still carries that name. Here in the distance, that blue building, is the Magan David Synagogue. Hopefully it's open. I'm not sure if they're davening yet, if they davened already but We'll go, hopefully we'll be able to go inside. This is the beautiful Magen David synagogue, right? Magin David Synagogue, built in 1861. 1861? 1861 by Sir David Sassoon. Wow. He arrived from Baghdad, from Iraq. Obviously, after many years of the community being here, and, um, you know, unfortunately the community has been shrinking, so there's less teachers and people, uh, you know, it's harder for them to remember all the traditions and, the, and everything, but the fact that people come here every single day no matter what, to make the minion and and just like even COVID or whatever, there's a minion here every single day that is very, very impressive and it makes me inspired to know that even if you're not the strongest community and you're shrinking and things aren't going well for you, but you still show up every day, that's what Hashem loves. city that's next to Mumbai. It's called Tane. It's in the Mumbai district, but uh, it's just bordering. We are about 40 kilometers away from where the Chabad house. The Chabad house is at the southest point of Mumbai. And what, now we are 40 kilometers north. Uh, this is a, it's not a fancy and western city as uh, Mumbai is. You can show them all the rickshaws. And uh, here there is a vibrant Jewish community. Many of the young people of the community moved here because the housing is, uh, is uh, much uh, cheaper over here and affordable. So there is one shul over here, which was built uh, like a uh, hundred and some years ago, and which is the only shul which is active here. And my colleague Rabbi uh, Bloy and his wife Mushki, they are the shluchim here. And in addition to the shliches in the city, we, last year we moved the school from Mumbai, from the city of Mumbai, we moved the school here. To Tane. To Tane. So, because there are more young families and more kids that are living around this area, because uh, transportation is a very big uh, deal uh, to bring kids to school and to any other Jewish activities. So. We moved the school here, so we'll be able to uh, cater to them. See this building? Yeah. This is, this is the shore. Now they are slowly it's getting back. Gate to, to heaven? Yeah. 
gate of heaven synagogue and now slowly slowly they're getting back to uh, getting back to life mm -hmm. and inside there's the school yes going in let's go wow Two girls from the Jewish community who attend. Where do you guys go to school? Yeah. Speak to him and loudly because we can't hear you. Where do you guys go to school? Jewish Academy. Very good. And what's your favorite part of Jewish Academy? Your class. <laughs> your class? My class. Oh, that's great. What did okay. you guys tell me about school? I asked. They have vacation next week. Oh. So they told me that. What do you guys want? Let me want is the cancel of every class but your class. They like my class. They like learning all the Jewish subjects. So they want to cancel all the classes and have yours? The Jewish classes. Okay, great. See? Yeah. Our classes rock. Okay, and what do you guys learn in my classes that's so interesting? Parasha. Parasha and? Kumash. Kumash. What are you guys in the middle of learning about in Kumash? We just started learning Kumash, how to learn, read inside the Pesukim and understand just from reading into the Pesukim. And they're loving that. How many children do you have? Three kids. They got Kanai Nahar. That one? Kanai Nahar, yes. And at the end of the day, you don't have your friends from your childhood and... It's hard. The things that you're used to, if you want to ask in general, it's hard. The uh, thing that keeps us going is our goal and, and the, the schos that we have to be shlokim of the room. And that's what keeps us happy and, and doing. And there's a very nice community here. Very that's lovely. That's give us the energy. And we give us the, how to look at the, at the place. We are not seeing, we are not sure what you're seeing. What do you see when you look at this you place? See, you see a different thing. We things. see potential. We see a potential. We see a place. We see Like, I wanted to show you. Sarah, come here. This is a girl that didn't that started school, and she just started keeping Shabbos. Wow. Mm -hmm. On her own. Very nice. Not with her parents, on her own. She, she walked to my house 25 minutes just so she could eat a meal. And when you see people like her, you, you know? <laughs> you get inspired. Very. Fired up. founders of this Chabados and the founders of this place, Rabbi and Mrs. Holzberg, Gabi and Rivki, as we call them, were murdered here together with four of their guests in Tovshin uh, Samaches in uh, 2008. And uh, leaving the whole building in complete destruction, there was almost three days of siege in this building from Wednesday night until Friday late afternoon where they actually, the they, the commander have managed to take over. This roof is very famous because uh, the actual commando forces landed with a chopper here on the roof. And from here they got into the building trying to rescue the people, which unfortunately uh, they couldn't. One of the rescuers were killed also here at the fourth floor. And fast forward, uh, when we came here, this building was still destroyed. Not destroyed completely but uh, a lot of destruction and was not yet reopened we decided to reposition the Chabad house over here to rebase the Chabad house over here but our understanding was uh, based on the famous idea of Yerido Zulu Tzerech Aliyah that the purpose of a descent is the ascent that comes as a result so just returning that to his previous glory and making it a Chabad house serving the Jewish community uh, it's not enough. We need a bigger and a stronger message to come out of this building. So we decided to come up with this idea of the museum, which uh, the idea of the museum, the goal of the museum is that people should come over here and basically change as a result of the visit over here. So one of the main attraction was to create a memorial for the 2611 attack. So imagine you have like 9-11 in America without any memorial. So there were plenty of places, very important places besides the Chabad house. There's the Taj, which you can see over there. And this Leopold restaurant and the CST station and other places who were attacked. And this city was on a, under, on a stop, on a complete standstill for three days. It's a city of 22 million people, right? It's not a Kleinish Tetl. And many people were killed in all those different locations. And we were shocked when we came here for the first time. We were shocked that there is no memorial for them. It's not part of the culture. But we as Eden, remembering 
is very essential part of our, uh, our way of life. So first of all, we decided to come up with this place, which is a memorial for the 2611 attack in general, all the places. We have the names of all the people who were killed. So how many people, how many people were killed here in total? 176 names that we have. It took us about three months to gather the list. There was no official government left? No. And I'm not sure we have all of them even now. We group them based on locations. Uh, so these five uh, people were killed at the boat that were hijacked with those boats was hijacked near Pakistan and the terrorists used it to sail to India and they came to the to the shore right here, a couple of hundred meters away from here. These buildings are blocking, but between those buildings you can see the water. So just a couple of hundred meters away they, they landed uh, with this fishing boat. Obviously they killed all of them. And when the flag was put up uh, three years ago, I was shocked to see how many Muslim names are there in the, yeah. in the list. No, it's not something I realized before, but uh, look, Sheikh Muhammad Ali, Kishorban, Azamotullah, uh, Kualsi, Ramantula, etc., etc. So I realized, you know, that the power of hatred is it's so powerful that it kills people, you know, it affects and it damages people regardless of their faith and their source, etc. So you're saying that this, like, unfortunately, the terrorists who did this happened to be Muslims and they killed people from their own religion. On the contrary, so how much when we add in goodness and kindness, so we see the maybe little effect, but the, the impact of it, it's a, it can be a massive impact. So this is the house, the apartment where the Holzberg's Hashemi Komdomam lived. This is the, was the, the salon, living room. This was the kitchen. And this is their bedrooms. And this is uh, Moishe's room. This is going to be pretty significant. So the idea of this apartment is to cre recreate Jewish life and explaining people what is Jewish life. We're going to focus on the 10 mitzvah campaign of the Rebbe through their life, basically. So the mezuzah will explain what a mezuzah is. A tefillin, which will be on the table, will explain what a tefillin is. Neiros Shabbos Kodesh. The kitchen will explain kosher food. Uh, the library will explain uh, the idea of teaching. Here we're going to have the Aleph base, which explains the idea of chinuch. There's a little memorial wall, which shows different pockmarks from the ricochet of bullets. So Rabbi, tell us what's going on here. So when the terrorists came, they shoot from the building outside. They were shooting from inside to outside? From inside to outside. They killed a couple of people here in the streets. And the locals have kept those bullet holes. You see those round uh, marks as the bullet holes condemning the 2611 terror attack. And this is, uh, you can still see some of the, those doors are the original doors that got those bullet holes. Mm. Also in our neighbor's building, you can see. Yeah, there's, I see there's a lot of holes. marks. Yeah. Yes, so this is the shame and the zikorin from what has happened uh, back then. Visiting Mumbai was a very emotional experience for me. As a Jew, it's traumatic to spend time in places where other Jews have been killed, like Kiddush Hashem. But at the same time, it's therapeutic to see that Jews are still thriving in India. As we say in Vihisha Amda, in every generation, there are people who try to destroy us but we, the Jews, endured. After all, the only way to fight such brutal darkness is with torches of light.